Welcome to the webinar on teaching and learning with Purple Mash in the early years. In this webinar, we're going to look particularly at this tool here, MiniMash, which is on the home page of your Purple Mash login. MiniMash is an interactive virtual classroom that allows children in the nursery and reception to explore, learn and create in a safe online space. In each of the seven learning areas, you will find a wide range of tools and content mapped around the early years framework. It also comes complete with 30 plus themed topic packs covering all of the early years favorite topics. Now, the first thing you need to think about, um, I'm going to come out of here, click on the teacher menu at the top left and go back to Purple Mash. The first thing you need to think about before you start using MiniMash is the MiniMash settings. Now there's a document here on that will guide you through the MiniMash pupil setup, exactly how children gain access to MiniMash and how you need to manipulate the settings in order for that to happen. So first of all, I'm going to go to the MiniMash settings. Now I am in our Barron Street school and here is class one with the children in this school. And you can see the children's names there under class one. So first of all, I need to think about, do I want the children um, to go straight to MiniMash rather than having to click through from Purple Mash? So when, for example, Amelia logs in with her individual login, I want it to so that the whole class will go automatically to MiniMash and not have to click through. So I'm going to click change that to yes. Now I also want to be able to, the children to save their work, so I'm going to enable that setting to create a tray for each of the pupils so they can save any work that they create. So if I click save, so class one will now go automatically into MiniMash and there will be a tray, if I click on trays. The trays here, there will be a tray for each of the pupils set up very easily. Now, one of these trays I've already gone in and edited using the edit pencil there. So Theo's tray, I've added, I've changed the colour on Theo's tray and I've added a little um, image. So I'm going to do that for Ruben's tray here as well. And I can change Ruben's tray and I can add an image. Now, if I had a photograph, I could choose the file button here. I have a photograph of Ruben, but I'm going to choose an image for Ruben instead of from a clip art rather than of his photograph. So you can very e easily edit the trays, the children's trays, so they very clearly see their tray colour and their image on there. Now you can also add at the top here, you can add a universal tray or um, that it could be a topic based tray. Uh, I'm going to do something on mini beasts because I'm going to create a game about or a puzzle with the ladybird on it. So there's my mini beast tray that I'm going to save some resources to. So let's come out of that. Now when the children log in with their individual login, they won't see all of the trays there. So for example, when Malachi logs in with his individual login, either at school or at home, he will only see his tray. It says my tray and it will have his image on there and his colour. He will also see the mini beast tray that I created because that's a universal tray and he'll also see this green tray here which is called I've called teacher's tray that I created earlier. So in terms of online safety the children are only seeing the trays that you universal trays you create as a teacher and also their own tray they won't see each other's work. So let's have a look around just, uh, the classroom here. Reading and writing, numbers and counting, games, simple city, go outside, roll, play, drawing and painting, music, go inside. Reading and writing. Let's have a look at the reading and writing resources. There's two creator story which you might recognise and have used in Purple Mash. It's a very simple animation ebook making program. You have some alphabet slideshows, paint projects, jigsaw puzzles, pairs games. Phonics Phase 2 and Phase 3 resources are in there also. Phase 4 and Phase 5 are in Purple Mash if you want to use those. Um, now I'm going to look for example at the paint projects. So I'm going to choose a letter of the alphabet, watch the little video on how to create the letter F. Excellent, I'm okay with that. I'm going to choose my pens down the left hand side. This is standard throughout all the Purple Mash tools and you have a slider to increase and decrease the thickness of the pen. Let's create the letter F. Let's see if I can do that. And I could replicate that in my little pin board on the right hand side. There's the letter F. And I could write something here. 
or I could just put my name at the bottom, depends on what level I'm at. Now the saving options have been tidied away into this little saving drop down menu here. So when the children want to save this, they can click the save button. And as I said before, the children will only see one tray that says my tray. They will also see the teacher's tray and the, the universal trays that I've created in this one on Mini Boosts. Now I'm going to save this one in my teacher tray. And you'll see that it's automatically the name is put in there and the date that it was created. And I'll click save. Here we are. Now you can print that off also. Use the drop down menu again. Click the print button and it will generate a PDF that you can very easily open up in a separate tab and you can print that for offline evidence of the children's work in Minimash. So let me come out of that and go back to the resources in reading and writing. Let's have a look at the numbers, numbers and numbers. counting. Let's click on numbers and counting. You have a pictogram tool to count which is also in uh, Purple Mash and there's lots of different resources you could use there. You could talk about your favourite food Oh, chocolate cake, delicious, cheese, pizza, mm, making me hungry. And again, you can print that off or you can save that file if you wanted to in any of the trays. We also have a number of paint projects. We have uh, Math City, which is a fabulous tool. It's very popular with uh, early years teachers. There are different activities in here. You have a video there of a man talking about his job as a taxi driver. All of the resources in here related to transport. And you have some children role playing in the playground of a nursery setting. And you have some activities where the children can drag and drop and um, complete activities based on different mathematical concepts from the early years framework. There are some measuring resources. These are created in a tool called Two Quiz, where the children can answer the question. This one has seven questions. Who has the longest trousers? This little one here. There we go. So I'm going to come out of that. So that was numbers and counting. Let's close those down. Games. The games. Lots of different games here. Puzzles, pairs, games. So go go outside. outside. Music. Music. I can create some fabulous music, some soundscapes with two explore or two beat. Again, these tools are available in purple. The drawing mesh, and painting. But they've been drawn together very simply into Mini Mesh. Now there's two painted picture where the children can create some amazing pictures. Let's have a look. Draw some splash pictures. Cool. And again, I can decrease and increase the thickness of my splash. And I can save that into my file. Let's have a look at the other things I have. Paint projects where the children can use the textured pens to create some amazing things here. Let's do the castle. And there's my pen. <sighs> that lets me create an amazing castle. You'll notice it's keeping my drawing within the lines of the castle there. And I can write something at the bottom or a simple sentence. Um, I, if I want to take the mask away, I can see where I actually did the drawing. And again, I can print that off and use that as offline evidence of the children's drawing with paint projects. Now, drawing match cam, uh, this one Roll here, role play. play. I can become a character, any of these characters here. And I could become a knight of the day. This is very easy for the children to click on the camera at the top here. And I can become a knight. Write about my experiences being a knight. Or I can draw something in there using my textured pen, my um, coloured pens on the left hand side. The children can also create and explore using Simple City, which is up on the top left there of the classroom. They can go to the park or the garage or the garden centre, the farm, the building site, the recycling centre, the cafe, the vet, the zoo or the doctors. So I'm going to go to the doctors and there's a video there of a doctor talking about what she does during her day and a video of children role playing doctors in the home corner of the reception classroom. And then there's two different levels of drag and drop activities where the children can create their own doctor's Go. Skin. So here I am. Pills. Here we go. Okay. Stethoscope. Let's give boy. boy. Let's give him some plaster band-aid. Here we go. And him a teddy. Teddy. Oh, there we go. So there's lots of activities you can use in Simple City. It's very popular in the early years and it's worth exploring.
Now, you can also add topics-based pins to the home page on your Minimash screen. I have, for example, added three pins here. If I use the drop-down pin uh, there, I've created weather, I'll use the weather topic, the Christmas topic, and the fairy tales topic. And I've also pinned my teacher's tray to the home page. I'm going to show you now how you can do that. If I click on the teacher's menu at the top left, I first of all went down to edit pins. And you can see a list of, there's about 25 plus different topic areas that you can pin to the home page here. Now let's get rid of the teacher's tray, let's get rid of fairy tales, and we're going to add under the sea. Now I want under the sea to be the pin that appears at the top. And I'm going to click OK there. I've now got three pins under the sea resources weather and Christmas. Let's have a look at the Christmas resources. There's a slideshow, some puzzles, a mash cam where the children can become Santa or an elf for the day. Um, and again, there's some activities and paint projects. These are fabulous. These activities are lovely where the children can decorate a Christmas tree. Now, if you want to print that off and use it as an offline resource, the, you, the children can then cut out the pictures and stick it on the Christmas tree. Now you can also use the teachers tools at the top left here in the teacher menu to create your own resources which you can then pin to a topic based tray on the home page. So you can create a jigsaw puzzle, pairs games, drag and drop activities, labeling quizzes, grouping, sorting, to create a story, animation ebook, multiple choice quiz, some music tools and a slideshow. Now I'm going to create a jigsaw puzzle with an image that I have downloaded from the internet earlier of a snowflake. So I'm going to use a six piece puzzle. Now I could draw on that and that could be my image for my puzzle, but I'm going to use the clip art at the top here. And there are some built in clip art items that are already there for you. Or I'm going to use this choose file button at the very bottom and browse my computer to find the image I used earlier. Here is a snowflake that I downloaded from the internet earlier. and That's going to be my jigsaw puzzle. Oh, let's rub out that image over the top. And let's add some information here. My snowflake puzzle. You can add your instructions at the bottom. Can you put this puzzle together? You can change the timing of the puzzle or the sound as well but I'm going to leave those as standard and I'm going to save that in the teachers tray so I'm going to use my drop down menu to save that into this pre-made teachers tray this one here with a little dragon on it this is a universal tray that I created earlier and I've now saved that inside that tray now, if you want to make that resource that you've just created available to the children to click on from the home page, you can add it as a topic pin alongside the other topic areas. So I'm going to click on that tray and you have this button here that says a tab that says choose work to pin. There's the snowflake puzzle that I've just created. I'm going to pin that with inside that tray. And I'm going to come out of that and I'm now going to add it here to the home page underneath my other topics pins that I've selected. So I'll go to my teacher menu, go to edit pins, and if I scroll down, there will be a button here that says teacher's tray. I'm going to add that to the selection of pins. In fact, let's make that the one that appears at the top and star that. So now I've got the resources inside that teacher's tray. There's my ladybird puzzle, my snowflake puzzle, and my letter F. These are all things that I pinned within this tray earlier. So here is the snowflake puzzle that the children can now click together and complete. The last thing I want to show you is how Minimash is mapped across the early years framework. So if I click on the teacher menu again and go to the links to the EYFS framework, it pops open a PDF where you can very clearly see all of the areas of learning and development in the early years mapped with the Purple Mash tools that you can use to support those objectives. So that concludes our teaching and learning with Purple Mash in the early years webinar. I hope you found it useful and thank you for listening. Please do contact us if you have any questions. We are here to help. Enjoy using Purple Mash and Mini Mash with your pupils.